That everybody has the two questions. One are when, when are we getting to Colgate Grove? Well, we answered that. Um, and the second one is when is the 16 going to be running? And I will just tell you, not today. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're working very hard. Um, you know, we wanted to do everything as best we could to eliminate any failures coming out of the gate. And we're getting closer. We're getting very close. Uh, here, after we get done here, you can look around the tender tank. Tender frame has all been rebuilt. I can tell you that the 16 at some point had a pretty serious collision with something else. Um, the tender frame was actually buckled on it uh, to the point where the steel was, uh, and it was some of the rust coming from uh, the uh, tender itself because they left coal and everything. All the tenders were full of coal and, and the 16 had rain coming in on it for quite a long while. And so the tender tank itself, you could poke your finger through it, it was so thin. And so we had, uh, we contracted with Curry Rail Services, which is the current owner of the Holidaysburg Park Shops, to build us a new tank to the original specifications. Um, we had it here. Uh, we wanted to spray line the inside of it to keep it, uh, uh, you know, to preserve it the best you can with putting water in it, and found out that they couldn't do that here, so we had to ship it back to Holidaysburg. Uh, we're waiting for it to come back. It should be back any week now. Uh, once it gets here, we'll paint it black and we'll set it on the frame, which you can see after we're done here, you can look around. The tender frame is there. All the trucks have been rebuilt. We put new tires on all the wheels under the tender truck. Uh, the air brake system has all been rebuilt. Pretty much where we're at with the 16, we had to do some, uh, replace about three quarters of the front tube sheet because we found some cracking in it that was significant enough that we wanted to fix it right. Um, that took a little while. We actually had the blueprints and CAD drawings done up where we water jet cut all the uh, the front tube sheet and then we found that some minor cracking in the rear door sheet of the firebox that has all been replaced and everything now we're working on stay bolts uh, replacing a, a bunch of cracked stay bolts we're getting to the point where we're putting things back together um, you know with the limited manpower that we have and the time that you have to do things it just takes time and I know everybody is anxious nobody is more anxious than me <laughs> um, to get it out, but we want to make sure when it comes out it's as good as what we can do with what we have. The engine has not run since 1956, excuse me. And there's probably a reason for it. You know, they picked the ones they did in 1960 probably because they knew that they were the ones that were, you know, the most reliable at the time. We haven't found anything critically wrong with it um, that really caused us any setbacks. It's just it's taking time. And uh, we, uh, have had all the appliances, the uh, air pumps, the generators, everything has been worked over, tested, and we have the jacketing is ready to go back on. As soon as we get to the point where we can put the tubes in it, which is not until the calculations are done, they're almost done with the form four calculations, so the minute we get those done, then we can put the tubes in because there's zero reason to put tubes in it and then have to take brand new tubes out because some calculation came out wrong. Um, but we're not seeing anything that looks like that's going to be that significant. So um, it's going well. I, I told yes, everybody yesterday, I suppose if you come here and see that the cab is not sitting outside on the <laughs> ground anymore, that's a good that'll indication we might be getting close. Um, <laughs> the tender, like I said, will be back uh, very soon. And it's going to look very shiny and black when we get it out. You know, I mean, we, we made the decision to paint it, you know, a, a gloss black only because it will not be glossy for very long. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, it's neat to see it come to fruition. One of the setbacks we did have, uh, uh, we had hired a welder who uh, was laid off from Norfolk Southern in Altoona who lives locally, and it turned out to be an excellent find. You just cannot find skilled labor down in this area as much as you do in some other areas. And and uh, his name is Matt Struble, and unfortunately three weeks ago he was in a horrible car accident and broke both of his legs, both of his ankles, and both of his knees. So um, he's doing he's doing okay now. He's on you know having surgery or anything, but that's a pretty big setback whenever he's your guy to do that. Um, Dave Dimitrovich is a certified welder, but he's also in charge of a whole bunch of other mechanical things, and just had a baby and just bought a house. So it's kind of you know so it's a whole lot of things happening at one time. But uh, I cannot tell you a date. I hope. 
to be testing the thing sometime this year. We do not know how long it will take to test it. The thing has not run since 1956. Um, all I will say, and I'll leave you with this, is we do plan on having a winter spectacular this year, and I will just leave it at that. Um, and for next year, we're planning with the full schedule of steam trains. So that just gives you more reason to come back. And the other thing, um, I will not, we won't be looking at the locomotive today. Um, it's in stall eight. Uh, it's, it's just not real conducive to a whole lot of, you know, tours going through, but also just because that's where we're working and that's how it is. Um, it, uh, <clears throat> lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, that's what I told the, I told the tour yesterday. So our, our philosophy with it is, and I keep telling Jonathan Smith, it's like everybody keeps asking and asking, well, we could take a picture of it every day that we put one bolt or we cut one bolt off of it. That's not really going to be all that exciting. So I said, it's, I said, take the approach of a strip tease, because if you show everything <laughs> all at <laughs> once, you kind of blew the, you know, I mean, it, it, it's not. So when you see it, it's going to be cool. It's going to be fun. We've got some really good ideas of how we want to unveil it. And uh, let's just say that I hope February President's Day weekend is going to be a very fun weekend for a whole lot of people. So, um, as far as the rest of the locomotives, we have the 14 in the shop. You know, we stripped it last year, had the asbestos abated on it as well. We were hoping that the drivers on it were better than the 15s. We found out that they were at once we cleaned them and every, everything, and they were worse than the 15s. So, um, right now, we have uh, contracted with Strasburg to have a whole entire new set of steel drivers centered to cast for it. Um, and the idea was, depending on the funding and how things kind of go, we may possibly have a second set done for the 15. Right now, it's kind of a, a crapshoot as to we may, because the 15 has already had its calculations and had a form for it done, we know what the boiler will most likely look like. Uh, we also know that the running gear on it needs some TLC. Both of them need trailing trucks rebuilt. That is still actually technically the 14's trailing truck underneath the 15, but they are both significantly worn out. So it's not so much the boiler or the firebox as it is the running gear. And so I would imagine how you're gonna see it once the 16 is out, you'll probably see us work on both. You know, if we run into a roadblock with one or we have to wait for something, we'll, we'll jump to the other one. And so it kind of, because this one has already had the asbestos abated, we don't have to deal with that. So there's a really good chance that the 14 and 15 will kind of come, come yeah. together. Um, I don't have, obviously don't have a timeline on when that is. I know as soon as we're done working on the 16, we're gonna start probably doing an inspection on the 15 to get it, just check it out and see how, what status it is. Beyond that, um, the 17 and 18 are both pretty well, you know, they were well used the last few years, the railroad ran in, in the 50s, and then the 17 obviously for, for decades here in the tourist era. So I don't know, I, I, the 12 may end up being the one after that, but we're still looking at years out. I know the 12 is, it, you know, it's gonna be a job, but uh, we could definitely begin to have that one back out running again. Thank you. Yes. 18 had a mechanical failure and they brought it back here and put it in the roundhouse, but I never heard anyone say what the problem is. You know, 18 actually had, it's interesting when you start diving into the operations in the 50s, like, you know, they were on a shoestring just trying to survive for the last probably five years. And so everything they did was with that mentality. You know what I mean? Just get it out, get it running, do what we can. If you read through the inspection and the repair uh, mechanical reports, they were just doing what they had to to survive. And the 18, um, had a lot of welding done to the interior of the, of the, you know, and that was one of the reasons when we when we went through everything, we inspected every one pretty closely to find what was the problem. And the firebox on the 18 had a lot of welding done to it, repeatedly. <laughs> um, and the other thing that's interesting, you read through the the like the daily inspection reports, and like some things never change because I managed you know, 150 people at my old job, and like, I don't know how many times you'd get an engine report and say, what's wrong with it? Well, it's broke. <laughs> <laughs> and what's, you know, and so, or guys get a bad attitude. Well, you read these daily inspection reports from like the very end, like from the end of 1955 into 56, and there was one on the, I think on the 16, it, it kept saying it wouldn't make steam, and the firemen kept reporting every day, it won't, engine won't make steam. 
And, and uh, so finally you can see the master mechanic's response to it was, well, if the fireman knew how to fire a locomotive. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of interesting to see that some things haven't changed. <laughs> Uh, as far as the other tenders, like every one of these tenders is in pretty, pretty shape. They may look good on the outside, but I can tell you the coal spaces on them all are uh, pretty, pretty ratty. Um, we do anticipate that if we if we do the 15, we have to replace the tender tank. We will we'll go back with like a if it's not real rivets, it'll most likely just be it'll have that aesthetic to it. We'll weld the rivet heads on. Um, the idea is to pretty much take them, keep them as they are. Um, the 16, we really haven't uh, had any major like upgrades or changes to it. There will be some small things like flange lubricators and things that just actually help with the wear of the wheels and stuff. But you've got to be very minimal. Any other questions while we're in here? Great. How far along are you on the sprinter? Oh, thank you, Chris. Well, if you look above your head, uh, you'll see orange and black. Yeah, you know, black pipe with orange fittings. So that is the fire suppression system that was installed. This this was installed up last December. Uh, we did we just finished the machine shop a couple months ago. Um, the the system as far as ins installation in the buildings is completed in both si in both buildings. Um, we ran into a lot of issues with water supply. So it's a dry system, which means it is uh, pressurized with air, and if one of the heads opens up because of fire heat it will flood the system with water because we can't heat the building um the way they designed it well, what most people understand is that the design process for the fire suppression actually started almost two years ago like this month we started that process before we even finalized the sale of the railroad and it has taken that long for us to figure out how to make this whole thing work um, one was the design of the building. Now, like you can, apparently you could build a 13 acre, you know, warehouse and it doesn't take much to design it. You know, with the system, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Clemmer Fire Protection out of Phillipsburg did these, these buildings. And he said this roundhouse was one of the most complex designs that they ever had because of all the angles with the roof line. And then apparently it's like a seven degree angle on every, every stall, but they vary. <laughs> right. Um, so they got the roof angles and everything were all done. The, the idea is, is if both them, if everything were just be on fire at one time, they want to be able to supply enough water for 30 minutes until the fire company can arrive. Okay. And that's really just to hopefully keep the fire at bay. It won't put the fire out, but, and so they, that, that 30 minutes for both buildings requires 140,000 gallons of water. 30 minutes um, so what we ran into with that was is that okay so where do we get the water from well the borough water system here is uh, is problematic at best without us putting that kind of a strain on it uh, just because of the nature of their system and so pretty much the uh, that there was not enough pressure in their system to, to, to be able to uh, supply the head pressure for the pumps and it was kind of the idea that if you put your finger on the end of a straw and suck on it it collapses the, the straw and we would do the exact same thing to their water system so we had to get back to the drawing board with that um, the idea is now we're going to put two tanks well back in uh, behind the coal tipple on the reservoir property uh, I think there's going to be a combined 175,000 gallons of water so basically a, the majors of supply will be for the fire suppression system and then we'll have a smaller tank, like 30, 40,000 gallons that will actually supply the locomotives and, and all of that. Then we have to go through it, obviously, installing <coughs> piping because the wooden water system is, was not good 10 years ago. It's not any better now. Um, and so that has been, it will be paid for with uh, some grants that we received from the state and a federal grant that we we're in the process of getting. Um, so we'll run new water lines, two new double water mains, one for each system, new electrical conduit and everything through all the buildings. And so that way we can upgrade electric to the buildings and things to just make everything a little safer, a little better. Um, the one thing we did find out, we had seven and a half inches of rain here about a month and a half ago in one day. And apparently the, the Jordan Dam that they got the water from before had been breached for quite a few years. And but 
it rained so hard that day and the trees got into the breach in the dam that it backed it up. And then we, so we're going around checking for water and we go into the shop and there's literally water, like a geyser coming out of the water pump in the shop. <laughs> Well, here in 2011, they never closed the valve at the dam, <laughs> and it was there was enough uh, continuity in the wooden water pipe that it was definitely coming back into the shop. So we're scrambling trying to find which valve does what, and you know. And so I can tell you that that's my luck. That part of the system works. Still the works. <laughs> we do plan on installing fire suppression in like the stone house and some of the other auxiliary buildings as well once they're stabilized and things like the second phase of the project so they designed the system to be able to handle that capacity so any other questions if you want to take you know like i said just watch if you guys want to kind of walk around and look you can see the m1 roof over there if you didn't get a chance to see it yesterday it's been done we do plan on painting the m1 uh, sometime over the winter into the spring into the original all of like home and green that it was originally painted in um, the roof looks awesome we had a lot of volunteer work uh, with the roof from the friends it was fun to do that with painting and replacing the canvas and everything and you can see the tender frame there feel free to walk around and just ask that you watch your step <laughs>